Hey guys, so in this video you're gonna go up, uh, guys. Oh, what time is it? What time is it? <laughs> what time is it? <laughs> in this video, I'm gonna share with you 10 ultimate bass guitar hacks um, that I've learned over the last what feels like a gazillion years of playing. Um, I'm just getting my props together. We've got a, a tea towel, got some washers, got some strings, got a lead, got a face case. Okay, so number one is the trusty tea towel. Now you may be thinking that, you know, you take a tea towel on your gig and then you play and then you wipe your string down. Obviously that is self-explanatory, it's going to save your strings. But the real hack comes when you have forgotten your bass stand. Well, this is where the trusty tea towel comes in. Come with me. Here on the cab, you just get the tea towel. And here's the super cool bit. You play a blinding set. Rock. Then afterwards you come over, you don't want your bass to be knocked over, you've forgotten your stand. You get your bass, you put it up against the side of your cab, and then with your tea towel, it doesn't have to be a tea towel, but you don't want a beach towel. You tie like that, and that is not gonna get knocked off. No way, no how. And then you can, you know, go to the bar, grab a pint, or do whatever you wanna do, and know that your bass isn't gonna fall over. So that was hack number one. Okay, number two, boarding a plane. Okay, so personally, when I'm boarding a plane, I generally check my base in. But sometimes you do want to take the base on board with you. And if that is the case, I've got a really cool trick for you. So here's my case. When you're getting on your flight, you might think that this is the best way to walk on. But this huge thing here, all of the staff are looking out for us fine fellow bass players and we're gonna get pulled and they're gonna say, you can't take that on board. So what I like to do is flip it upside down. Are you learning stuff here, guys? <laughs> flip it upside down and carry it on like that because as you go to board the plane, the staff are just gonna look at you and they're gonna think you've just got a rucksack on. Like, yes, they're gonna think you've got a tail if they look. Through my experience, I've never been pulled to one side when I've had it like this, but I've been pulled to the side so much when I've had it the other way up like this. Oh no, no, no. A lot of you guys might have had issues when you're trying to get up to the higher registers of the neck and you feel as if this part of your arm is kind of going into your body. You know, you'd be down here. But as you get up here, you know, this is happening and you're like, and so many, I've worked with so many students and they're like, ah, oh, I don't know how to do this. Here's a really cool hack for you, right? The base, don't have it flush to your body across like this, have it at a 45 degree angle. So the higher you want to go up here, the more you push your base at. And as you can see, my body's still flat on, but my base is there. So then I end up in this position. a little bit of an angle. Okay, next tip is how to make your own strap locks. Um, I'm gonna use this, which is the SBL1 strap. These, uh, we, we had these custom made a few months ago and we sold out in under 24 hours. Since then, we've not had any built at all and we've just had a brand new batch made. Is this going out on Friday? Yeah. Opening orders on Friday. If you're watching this and it's before Saturday morning or on Saturday, you might be able to still get one of these. If not, they may have sold out just because of last hour. So what is a strap lock? Well, you know, here we are with bass players. We're rocking, we're loving life, and sometimes we'll get a little bit excited and it'll just pop off. And that's why strap locks exist. But you can actually use washers like this. You can get that at like any kind of like plumbing type of wholesalers. Let me show you. All you need to do is get the rubber washer, place it round the strap button, like so. Make sure it's tucked in around there, and that will now not come off at all. All you need to make sure is it's nice and tight. The, t uh, the tighter fit in it is, the better. And as I said, you can get them at any pl like, like plumbing retailer. And remember guys, if you want to check out the strap, hit the link below. If it's past Saturday, uh, you might not be able to get one, but Hopefully you will. 
Okay, the next tip is what to do with your lead when you're playing live. If you've just got it like this in your base, okay, and somebody steps on the end of your lead, it can either pull this down, break it off. I'm sure we've all seen the, uh, the P bases where this part of the, the scratch plate's broken off because it's been pulled out or whatever. There's a really super easy way to get away from that. You just thread it through your strap, okay? And then make sure you give yourself a whole load of extra cable here. So if somebody stands on it and you're moving, then it just does this. It doesn't obviously pull it out. The next tip guys is about technique. It is really easy to forget about this hand and just concentrate on this. You know, you concentrate on what scale am I playing, what notes are you playing, fingering patterns, all of that jazz, and you forget about this hand. So what really helped me in the past is isolating this hand and working on exercises that really focus on getting this, this hand in shape. One of the most common ones is that some people rake and then they as in they play one note and then the next string they use the same finger that's great i do that like all the time i'll play the index finger and then if it goes down a string i'll play the index finger again the thing that people trip up on is they have no real control over it so this tip is really focus on plucking hand exercises as well as this hand. Don't forget about this little bad boy. The next tip is also plane related, and it is learn walking bass lines to get your together. If you're anything like me, you wanna master the fretboard, you wanna be able to You wanna play all around the fretboard with complete freedom, and the key to that is learning walking bass lines. Why is that? It's because we are outlining chords using chord tones and chromaticism and scale tones, and that is the key elements of a walking bass line. But by learning walking bass lines, what you're doing is learning how to do it in a practical and musical setting. So learn walking bass lines, it will completely change your playing forever. If you are wanting to learn walking bass lines, and I really, really hope you do because it's probably the one thing that really pushed my bass playing to the next level. If you're an Academy member at Scott's Bass Essence, check out the Beginning Jazz Survival Guide, guys. It is the ultimate course, video course, obviously, to get the, all of these walking bass lines into your grooves, into your solos, and everything in between. For me, it's out of all of the courses that I've ever created, that one is probably the most, or one of the most important ones. So if you are an Academy member, check that out. If not, just go over to the website and grab your 14-day free trial, and then you can just try the whole thing out, including all of the other courses, totally for free. Okay, next tack is involving this little bad boy, a tuner. When you're tuning your bass, instead of just using open strings, you want to use the harmonic because it gives a clearer note to the tuner so you get a more accurate reading. So instead of playing open strings, use the harmonics. Now if you're unsure, it's really easy to play a harmonic. You just get your finger, put it over the 12th fret, not in between, not here, like directly over the 12th fret. You don't hold the string down, you just put your finger gently against the string and then pluck it and then you can take it away and it'll ring out, okay? Now, I actually shared this hack a couple of weeks ago, but I think it's so important that I'm gonna share it again. It's about restringing your bass. You'll have heard people talking about, oh, there's a dead string in the set, meaning they strung their bass up or their guitar, and then after they you know, tuned it all up and played it, there was like a dud string, and it just didn't sound as nice as the other strings. And they always think that that's the string manufacturer's fault. False. A lot of the time, it's to do because you put your string on wrongly. This is like a round wound string, right? So you've got an inner core and then you've got an outer core that's wound around it, round wound. So what you do is you get the string to the right length, you cut it like that. This is the key part. You don't just thread that in the machine head and start winding because the inner core can slip. You need to pinch that off and all you need to do is grab the string and then 
do that. And I've just put a little nip in that. Now doing that, crimping the end like that, is gonna hold that inner core, which means when you put it in the machine head and tighten it up, that inner core is not gonna slip and it'll save you a, you know, it'll take, save you a ton of money over the years because you won't always be thinking that you've got a dead string in the set. Okay, so I'm guessing now you wanna know what number 10 is. Well, number 10 is the, the most special of all of them because I want you guys you who are watching this video to tell me what your number one bass guitar hack is and that is gonna be number 10 down there in the comments. So if you're watching this video, make sure you comment and leave your top hack. That would be amazing and it would really make my day to know that you guys have been a part of creating these ultimate 10 bass guitar hacks. Hey George, SBL mascot. Anyway guys, take it easy and as always, See you in the shed. It's been a long day. See you in the shed, guys. Bye. Whoa, 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 where are you going? If you haven't subscribed to the Scots Bass Lessons channel yet here on YouTube, click the link, subscribe. I release two videos like this every single week. You can also check out our other videos over there. And if you've not checked out scotsbasslessons.com membership, check it out. You can grab your 14 day free trial over there.